Hey what's up guys it's Marf and welcome back to another Car X Street video. Today I have gameplay of the Nissan Skyline GTR R34 and this is probably one of the most popular cars that's in this game and I grinded out quite a bit yesterday in order to afford this car so you'll see the process of buying it and of course some races in this car. I upgraded it just a bit to meet the minimum requirements for those races but it's not heavily modified in any way. I also wanted to talk about the game in general now that I've had quite a bit of time to drive throughout the world and go through some of the different like mini campaign things and of course I've unlocked this GTR R34 but I've also unlocked the Toyota AE86 which if you'd like some gameplay of that car be sure to let me know in the comments down below but I basically just used that car to get the Skyline R34. Now I wanted to talk a bit about the grind in this game because I was searching on YouTube for some other gameplay videos seeing what cars I should buy and just looking at other people's impressions and I noticed that someone made a video on how to farm credits in this game and there was a certain race where it takes around 55 seconds to around a minute or so depending on what car you have and you get around a thousand or 700 credits per race. Now that is basically what I used to grind out for the Skyline R34 and it made me realize that this game does have pretty far to go in terms of the economy. It's really basic at the moment but if you're not doing something like this where you're just grinding a useful full race it really does show how not really that good the economy is because every time at least in these mini campaigns you do a couple of races you'll get maybe 5,000 credits or so and then you need to upgrade your car in order to start the other set of races but those upgrades will cost around three to four thousand or somewhere in that ballpark so you end up winning money based on the races but then you spend all of it in order to upgrade your car and that is a bit of a problem because even though you get a significant amount of money at the end of this mini campaign, like I believe one of them is around 15 races and you get 15,000 credits, I might be wrong on that, but either way, it's not really that much. I think maybe instead of giving you credits, maybe for completing one of these or maybe a set of these campaigns, you should get a car or maybe a set of new engine parts or something like that because I don't think the rewards are good enough for the amount of time that the player spends driving. And I know that at the moment there isn't a lot of cars in the game, so it makes sense to sort of spread them out. But in the future, if they add cars post launch, I think that the economy definitely needs to be upgraded. It also just doesn't feel very satisfying to drive a couple of minutes to finish a race or two and you only get like one 1,000 to 2,000 credits. It just doesn't feel that satisfying. You don't feel like you're getting rewarded for the amount of time that you're playing the game. So I just think that it needs some adjusting. It's not anything terrible. Like I said, if you figure out how to farm this game, it's not that big of a deal. Like it sort of reminds me back in the old days of Asphalt 8 where you could grind mastery races or something like that, where it was kind of boring, but it wasn't like the worst thing in the world, but it certainly does need to be adjusted in order to make it just that much of a more sweet spot for the economy. Now talking about kind of annoying, we'll talk about the gas just a bit I did find it still annoying but it never really got to the point where I really got frustrated with it I expected because I stepped up to the Skyline R34 which is a pretty darn good car I was expecting the gas system to be adjusted and maybe something like Asphalt 9 where the higher performance the car is the less gas I get and the more time it takes to refill that gas but I was wrong it seemed to stay pretty similar to the starting car which is the Civic as well as the Toyota AE86 so I was still filling up my gas with maybe one or two ads every like maybe two or three races but in comparison to other games this is really not that bad of course I would prefer for there to be no gas system whatsoever but I thought it was going to get more annoying but it didn't and I'm glad I hope it stays that way because in its current state it's not the worst thing like I said and I could certainly deal with it and I think many players will be able to deal with it as well now I also went to the cosmetic shop to sort of look at the prices I looked at the cosmetic shop earlier just to see what I could do and what the customization options were but then I noticed how much more expensive it is than other games in order to do very simple things like repaint your car like I noticed for the R34 in order to make it matte orange it cost me around 10,000 tokens or credits I guess which is a lot of money considering you need a balance customization upgrades and getting new cars in the first place so I was quite annoyed at how expensive that was I think there needs to be a balance with how expensive upgrades are versus how expensive customization is because you don't want the player to feel like they're sort of driving around and spending their money so quickly that they don't have an option I feel like when I'm driving around I feel a need to upgrade my car instead of spending money on customization because if I spend that money on customization I'm not really getting any sort of useful benefit and so I just throw money in the garbage can even though it will make 
make my card look that much cooler. But I think if they adjusted those prices to lower them, I think it would make a lot more sense because I don't want to be driving around just only for upgrading my car because then I won't get a chance to spend money on customization, which I find annoying and I think a lot of other people will find that annoying as well. Again, it's not anything crazy, but I would rather spend 10 minutes to drive around my car to upgrade it, but then also have a customization option rather than 10 minutes just to repaint my car, which is kind of annoying. The other thing I wanted to quickly talk about is the drift events. The drift events aren't balanced very correctly. Going from the different reward tiers is actually around double the points in the drift mode, which for starting cars is basically impossible. But I noticed in my R34, I can really only get the maybe six or fifth reward tier, which is really quite bad because it makes it so you spend all this time doing these drift events. And whereas if you did a sprint race, you could get maybe 700 to 1000 credits, but in the drift races, you'll get maybe 100 to 300. So I'm hoping that they adjust these point values soon because it is really ridiculous. It is just not worth doing those drift events whatsoever. I am just ignoring them now because they're just not worth it. Other than that, I know it's mostly negative that I've talked about, but I just want to reiterate the map in this game is really, really awesome. I've had a lot of fun driving, especially the R34 because it can reach very high speeds. I'm going now over 130 miles per hour and doing so on the highway is absolutely amazing, especially at nighttime. It is laggy, but it does look really good. And I really am getting sent back to my childhood of like Need for Speed Carbon and Need for Speed World. And it's really cool to see that type of vibe implemented in mobile and again like I said in my last video I'm sure the performance will be a lot better if you're running this on PC but if they do optimize for mobile within the next couple of months I can see this really turning out quite well in terms of just the raw gameplay experience I think the audio needs some adjusting because right now it feels very barren there aren't a lot of sounds here and there and if there are sounds they are just kind of generic car sounds from the different like NPC cars and whatnot are very bland and the environment sounds are very very generic they sound like they just kind of downloaded a free sound from the unity asset store or something like that but like i said in my last video this is a very early beta i assume all of these different things are going to be improved for the final game so i'm not judging all of that too harshly i'm really just looking at the core gameplay experience and i do see a lot of potential with it it will need a lot of tweaks and balance changes in order to get it quite right but right now, again, I am seeing a lot of potential with this game. Now, I don't know exactly what is up with multiplayer. I haven't gotten any information regarding whether or not it'll be open world multiplayer or if you'll just be able to join races with friends in multiplayer. But I really hope that multiplayer is coming soon because that would really make this an absolutely amazing game. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on Car X Street and the Skyline R34 in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys later.